All right, hello everyone. Happy Monday. It is May 11th, uh, 2020. We got a pack show for you with COVID, some new job opportunities. Uh, well, what else we got? Oh, it's just so much more. So here we go. Let's get started. Okay, so um, we're going to burn through the weekend's numbers really quick, and then we're going to listen in on Dr. Bonnie Henry's update once she gets going here, which should be any second now. Uh, so on over the weekend, on May 8th, we had 29 new cases with one new death. On May 9th, we had 15 new cases with two new deaths. And we don't currently have an update for May 10th, which Dr. Bonnie Henry will be talking about uh, today. Um, but... Uh, oh, and here we go. So let's just listen in. We'll just listen to the first little bit, and then we will get going on the rest of the show. Our COVID-19 uh, briefing for today. I want to say how honored we are to be on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees, and the Esquimalt First Nations. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Henry. Thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, this is our update on COVID-19 here in British Columbia for the two periods of uh, Saturday to Sunday and then yesterday through um, midday today. So between May uh, 9th and 10th, we had nine new cases uh, who tested positive for COVID-19 here in British Columbia. And uh, between yesterday and today, an additional 14 new people who have tested positive. So that brings our total to 23 new cases since we last uh, reported on Saturday. And our total in the province uh, is now at 2,353 people who have tested positive in British Columbia. That includes 873 people in the Vancouver Coastal Health Region, 1,118 in the Fraser Health Region, 125 people in the Vancouver Island Health Region, 180 people in the interior health region and 57 people in the northern health region. We currently have 19 active outbreaks in long-term care, assisted living or acute care, um, with an additional eight cases uh, in that uh, area, uh, bringing our total there to 291 residents who are affected and 184 staff. Um, there are 19 long-term care facility outbreaks that have been declared over and one of the units at uh, Ridge Meadows has also uh, resolved in the previous um, couple of days. We have no new community outbreaks and on a very positive note, uh, the, uh, the outbreak that we had in, in a number of temporary foreign workers who were at the Bylands Nursery in West Kelowna have now all recovered and there are no new cases and that outbreak is officially declared over as of today. So that is uh, excellent news. We know how much we depend on um, the temporary foreign workers who come into British Columbia to support our agriculture sector and that uh, their health and the health of our communities is paramount. And I want to really um, give a note of thanks to Interior Health who spent uh, a lot of time supporting um, this uh, outbreak and also to the Okay, so that's the new numbers for the last couple of days. Uh, so, th of course, thank you to Bonnie Henry for all the work that they are doing. Um, now, if you would like to give me a call, you can always give me a call at 778-694-4662, and we're going to get into the rest of the news right now but first we're going to go over a little bit of house uh housekeeping for the hub online network um, so we've got a few things going on one of them being that we are we are learning as we go what's sort of working for us and for you guys at home um, so right now every other week we have to change our time frame uh, to uh, keep in mind for council meetings so today there's council meetings at 4 30 and 7 tonight um, so if we go live at 4, like we have been doing, we're going to be late for those council meetings. So we've been switching our times all sort of willy-nilly uh, over the last little while. What I want to do is say we're going to go live at 3 p.m. Mondays and Fridays uh, moving forward. That gives us time to uh, 
do our show at three and still get to the council meetings, whichever one it may be, that starts off those systems. Um, and then on Fridays at three, and now last week we had to go live at, on Thursday. I've been having lots of uh, eye appoint doctor's appointments down, down at the coast. If you can see uh, there, I got a little bit of a black eye going on. I had surgery on my eye again last Friday. Um, and I'm getting over that now, but I have to go back down again this weekend. So it very well may be that Jessica does the show on Friday if I can't make it back in time to do it. Uh, sometimes they ask, so my appointment's in the morning on Friday, but they ask me sometimes to stay a little bit later um, to do another type of checkup, like an ultrasound or something that takes up the, the rest of my day. Uh, so we're going to stick to the three o'clock uh, time frame on Mondays and Fridays uh, to take those types of things into consideration. Also, that being said, the Hub Online Network or the Honline Network has three job opportunities. So if you are sitting at home, we're going to talk about what our job opportunities are. Um, and also Jessica is at home uh, adding in any information as we go in the comments. So thank you, Jessica. And thank you, Vicky, for watching. I am a tough guy. Uh, so we're going to start with the digital tourism and ad ambassador. So what this is, it's a summer youth uh, job for the Ashcroft Hub, but they're going to be placed into the Hub Online Network uh, system. So this job goes from June 1st until August 31st, so all summer long. Uh, you'll be paid $14.60 an hour for 35 hours a week. Uh, so Jessica is the contact, and that is uh, manager at hubonlinenetwork.com. I didn't put a a thing in there, but Jessica, if you want to put your email address into the comments, that'd be great. Uh, and the, so of course it's posted today. Um, we will train on the job, so you'll be trained by myself and by Jessica. Um, and this expires whenever we find people. Now, uh, what my understanding is, is that the, this is a grant by um, assets, which is an Aboriginal uh, grant, which is fantastic. Uh, we're, so what we're doing is we're looking for two individuals that are between the ages of 15 and 30 um, that identify as Aboriginal to qualify for these two jobs. And again, there's two of them. Um, so in, if you're looking to uh, get in on this job, again, email manager at Hub Online Network. Now, the role and responsibilities. So under the direction of the Han manager, the Digital Tourism Ambassador, or DTA, will create digital video content that reflects the local history, culture, stories, and events of communities in the... In the I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce that. So what I'm hoping is... Uh, sh so, Shekwetmik, yes. And the Nakl... I don't even want to try. I, I'm going to butcher it, and that would make me feel bad. Um, the DTA will be an ambassador for those uh, groups of people and will collect feedback to inform appropriate video content creation and distribution. Um, and I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get to learn how to pronounce some of these uh, names. Uh, so qualifications and education requirements. So good understanding of technology and social media as an asset. High degree of self-motivation and proven ability to generate story ideas. Ability to establish an appropriate uh, rapport with sources. Ability to work with a team. Strong organizational and time management skills, ensuring that deadlines are always met. Have a keen interest in local community events and issues. Willingness to work uh, evenings and weekends when necessary. Um, so if you can go and look at our stuff from last year, uh, there's things that happen all summer long, uh, on weekends, evenings, all sorts of stuff, uh, different time periods. Now this summer might be a little bit different, um, but uh, as events and things happen, we would like to cover that. So those would be things that would be covered under this. Uh, must be physically able to manage equipment and work in a, in a variety of environments. Complete a satisfactory criminal record check uh, if you're over 19. Uh, qualify under assets, so must be 15 to 30 and identify as indigenous uh, ancestry and speak fluent English. Uh, preferred skills, the DTA should have excellent people skills. They should be able to work independently with minimal su super 
supervision, the ability to lead teams, a demonstrated ability to plan a project and see it through to completion, balanced driver, valid driver's license is an asset, priority will be given to those with experience working in the field of video production and or leading programs for local communities. Uh, additional notes. Applicants will be contacted only if they are called for an interview. The hub maintains a work environment in compliance with WCB standards, including COVID-19 requirements. And the Ashcroft Hub Society and the Hub Online Network are advocates for equ equity and is committed to ensuring uh, representation in its community. So that is for the assets job posting. Again, we're looking for two people uh, that identify as Indigenous and between the ages of 15 and 30. Now, the other job that we have is uh, full-time, so 35 hours a week, as a video producer uh, working at the Ashcroft Hub for $18 an hour. Uh, and you'll, of course, get trained on the job. Um, also, send your resume into manager at hubonlinenetwork.com. And it's a little bit different uh, description and qualifications. So I'm going to read this out as well. Um, so the Hub Online Network, or HAN, is a project of the Ashcroft Hub Society and is looking for an enthusiastic, community-minded person to fill the position of video producer. Uh, this position is, founded, is funded by COVID-19 relief dollars via the province of BC. The goal of the Hub Online Network, or HAN, is to connect and promote our communities by providing local, relevant information, entertainment, and resources. Uh, so role and responsibilities. Under the direction of the Han manager, the VP will work together with staff and volunteers to produce a variety of videos for an online audience. The VP will know and connect with local communities and produce videos that are of interest to and reflect the unique events, history, cultures, and flavors of each. Supervisor responsibilities. The VP will function as the leader of a team of staff and volunteer community media makers. The VP will work collaboratively with staff, volunteers, and community members to create professional quality content delivered through video, web, podcasts, and social media. The VP will collaboratively plan and create productions that reflect local interests. And again, uh, so we're looking for people with a high degree of self-motivation and proven ability to generate story ideas, excellent interviewing skills, demonstrating an ability to establish an appropriate rapport with sources, Proven ability to work with volunteers, strong organi organizational and time management skills, ensuring deadlines are always met, have a keen interest in local community events and issues, have a valid driver's license, willingness to work evenings and weekends when necessary, and we would prefer that you are, have strong technical social media and video production skills, an understanding of video journalism, uh, knowledge of how local issues impact residents, and a passion for storytelling. Um, and thank you to everyone in advance uh, if you apply. So, yes, we're trying to expand the team. Thank you, Vicki Trill, for all the hard work you've done in finding these grants uh, and keeping the Hub Online Network going um, between you and Jan. That's how we got started. So, uh, and here we are a year later. So thank you all. And please get your resumes in. We're looking for people now because, of course, we're going to get into this, but the restrictions are lifting and we want to make as much video content as possible. So, that is that. Now, getting back to COVID-19. Oh, oh, also, you can find these job postings, I'm sure, on the Hub, on the Hub Facebook page, and we will post them onto the Hub Online Network page as well. So, um, tonight, the BC COVID, there is a BC COVID town hall. So, do you have healthcare-related questions about COVID-19? BC's Restart Plan or BC's Surgical Renewal Plan. Join a virtual town hall with Dr. Bonnie Henry and Minister Adrian Dix tonight at 7.15. Uh, so that'll be, you, I'm sure you can find that on the face, uh, Government of BC Facebook page, uh, Twitter page, and or uh, on their website. Um, now this is interesting. So there's a thing called a Spartan Test. And what this test is, is a COVID testing system that takes only half an hour. So they swab you and you get your result within half an hour. It's supposed to be very quick, very efficient. Um, the drawback is, is that it could only be used 15 times a day. Now, that being said, there is a Spartan test recall. An Ottawa biotech company is voluntarily recalling a rapid test for COVID-19 after Health Canada expressed concern about its effectiveness. 
dealing a setback to expand testing in the country. Spartan Bioscience uh, said Sunday that the concerns center around the preparatory swab used in the test, uh, but that the Health Canada report out Friday did not raise concerns about uh, the accuracy of the test uh, regents and portable analyzer device. So it's, so it's not the device itself, it's just the swabs that are apparently the issue. So the company said that it will recall 5,500 tests shipped uh, nas nationally and work on additional clinical studies uh, to assess the sampling method and swab. Um, so now, let's talk about BC's plan for reopening, which includes, let me find it here. So right now, we are in phase one. Um, which is, again, where we are today. So what they're going to be doing is opening essential uh, health and health services. Uh, oh, no, sorry, this is what's already open. So essential health and health services, law enforcement, public safety, first responders, and emer emergency response personnel, vulnerable population service providers, critical infrastructure, food and agriculture service providers, uh, transportation, industry and manufacturing, sanitation, communication and information technology, that's us at the Hub Online Network, financial institutions and other non-health essential service providers. Um, phase two, which is what we're starting to look at now, uh, includes restoration of health services. So as they were starting to talk about last week, um, this is rescheduling of elective surgeries, uh, non-essential surgeries and the like. Um, dental services of the same type are going to be starting to open up. Uh, so dentistry, physiotherapy, registered massage therapy and chiropractors are going to open. Uh, physical therapy, speech therapy and similar services are going to reopen. And again, these are all on small scale, so they're not going to just open their doors and have millions of people come in. It's going to be under strict supervision with strict rules, small numbers to start, etc. Uh, the retail sector will have hair salons, barbers and other personal service establishments, in-person counseling, restaurants, cafes and pubs with sufficient distancing measures, uh, museums, art galleries and libraries, office-based work sites, uh, recreation and sports, parks, beaches and outdoor spaces and childcare are all going to be reopening in small ways, uh, in varying ways over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and for example, this weekend, uh, the parks are going to be reopening. Um, now I did see, so of course I was down at the coast getting eye surgery on Friday. On Saturday on our way home, we noticed that a uh, pull-out spot just outside of Hope, um, that it was just packed with people. This place called Lake in the Woods, and there was cars going parked on the side of the road going down the highway. Uh, the parking lot was full. It was people soup there. Um, so they're maybe jumping the gun. And that's my question for you today, if you're watching. Um, do you think that we're opening too early? We're not opening early enough, fast enough? Uh, let us let us know in the comments or please email us at hon at ashcrofthub.com. We'd love to hear your opinion about what you think in regards to how we are opening up uh, the province. And so all of those things will be opening in mid-May and I'll talk about this again on Friday just as a refresher. Now phase three, um, if transmission rates remain low or in decline under enhanced protocols, uh, hotels and resorts will be opening up in June. Uh, parks, uh, broader reopening, including some overnight camping, will be in June. So the parks that are opening up now are not campsites, it's just provincial parks. Um, it doesn't specify whether the bathrooms will be open in those provincial parks, um, but uh, in June, uh, campsites. So broader reopening, including some overnight camping. Uh, the film industry will, is apparently going to be beginning with domestic productions in June and July. Uh, select entertainment, movies, and symphony will not, uh, but not large concerts, will be in July. And post-secondary education with mix of online and in-class courses will start in September. K-12 education with only a partial return this school year uh, will start in September 2020. Uh, so that being said, K-12, they are looking at ways to bring kids back starting now on a voluntary basis. Um, but they are going to look at a more permanent uh, structure in September. And phase four um, are activities and this, so conditions at least one of the following wide vaccination. So once we have vaccines, 
Uh, we are looking at activities re uh, requiring large gatherings such as conventions, live audience professional sports, concerts, international tourism. Uh, the timing of a safe start of nightclubs, casinos, and bars is more complicated considering a uh, is a more complicated consideration. As with other sectors, industry associations will be expected to develop safe operations plans for review that are in keeping with the public health and safety guidelines as well as at work BC. So again, uh, what you're going to have to do if you're one of these businesses is provide a plan as to how you're going to keep things clean, keep people safe, how many people you're going to let into the business. Um, and then, and only then, will you be allowed to open your doors on this phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four basis. Uh, so that is what we are looking at in terms of um, our slow reopen in BC. Now, that being said, there is a story out there about Major League Baseball. So Major League Baseball owners gave the go-ahead Monday uh, to making a proposal to the players union that could lead to the coronavirus delayed season starting around the 4th of July weekend in, ball, in ballparks without fans. Um, a plan that envisioned expanding the designated hitter to the National League for 2020. Uh, so they're talking about opening up baseball with no people in the arena um, on the July 4th weekend. So spring training would start in early to mid-June, a person familiar with the decision told the Associated Press. Uh, the person spoke on condition of and amenity, be, and amenity because details of the plan were not announced. So the Major League Baseball officials are slated to make a presentation to the union on Tuesday. Uh, an agreement with the Players Association is needed and talks are expected to be difficult, especially over a proposal of a, over a revenue split that would be unprecedented for baseball. So if you're a baseball fan, maybe that's some good news. Um, Sorry, I'm reading a, a message here from Vicky Trill. We are waiting to hear from Interior Health whether community centers, fitness centers can open in June. Yeah, so that would affect, uh, of course, the hub um, in many different ways. So hopefully uh, the current health order expires May 30th. Oh, well, that's interesting. So right now the hub is potentially looking at a June open. Um, I'm not saying that that's the case. Maybe we can do a... Um, interview with Vicky Trill about what's going on over the next couple of days and play that on our Friday show. Uh, that would be great. Keep that in mind, Vicky, and we will get in touch with you after the show here. So, um, this is interesting. In Cache Creek, there will be a drive-in movie. So May 21st, 2020, we are excited to be hosting a drive-in movie. Just a little way to say thank you from all of the uh, for all of the community, amazing support. Let's remember, we have to follow the social distancing guidelines and stay in our vehicles. Uh, I wish that there was a way that I could make sure everyone is able to attend. Please book your tickets ASAP. Uh, we have less space than usual due to COVID. Uh, please use the washroom before you come and get your tickets at... Um, Jessica, if you can find this, this is from Kevin Scharfenberg. Uh, he's hosting this event. Um, if you can find his Facebook page and add that to the uh, comments, that would be great. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. They're playing Jumanji, uh, the next level. Um, so that's a social gathering with physical distancing. Um, and again, that's May 21st, my birthday, uh, in Cache Creek. Uh, so what I'm wanting to do in all of the shows moving forward how do you, so how do you book tickets, uh, Vicky's asking? Uh, you can get the tickets at www.tnrdhomes.com slash driveinmovie. Um, again, that's www.tnrdhomes.com slash driveinmovie. And again, Jessica has now put the link in the comments of this video. Um, so, as I was saying, what I would like to do, so we're moving on from COVID now. Uh, so I want to share what our MLA and our MP for our area are sharing off of their Twitter feed. Um, I tried to do this last week, uh, but I had an issue with the volume on the uh, computer, so I couldn't share Brad Viss's. But the last tweet that MLA Jackie Taggart shared, because she didn't, doesn't really tweet too much herself, uh, she says that this week is not only hashtag museums week, but also hashtag national nurses week. 
Uh, so tomorrow, let's join together as Canadians to celebrate nursing hero Florence Nightingale on her 200th birthday by shining a light in your window or participating in the 7 p.m. Clap for Cares. Uh, clap for Carers. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, so happy National Nurses Week and happy National Museums Week. Um, Florence Nightingale is 200. That's fantastic. Uh, so thank you, Jackie Taggart, for sharing that. Now, MP Brad Viss uh, has a statement. Um, and so I'm going to read uh, certain excerpts from the statement. And it says, and this is with his specific letterhead. Um, so, the Honorable Pierre Polyver, Conservative Shadow Minister for Finance, and the Honorable uh, Michelle Rempel Gardner, Conservative Shadow Minister for Industry and Economic Development, today responded to the government's Large Employer Emergency Financing Facility, or the LEAFF, announcement. Uh, of the limited details that were released, there are some concerning red flags. For example, Minister Baines stated that Industry Canada will be reviewing applications uh, as opposed to the Canada Emergency Business Account, which is overseen through arm's length groups like BDC and EDC. I don't know what those acronyms stand for. Uh, this opens the door for political interference for the Liberals to pick and choose winners and losers. Uh, it has been 47 days since the finance minister promised help for oil and gas within hours or days, yet neither the industry minister uh, nor the finance minister would clarify this morning if more support would be announced. Uh, so that is, sounds fairly interesting. Of course, our MP happens to be conservative. Um, so if you'd like to know more about what he is talking about, you can find him on Twitter or on Facebook, and you can find uh, this story expanded based off of the letter that he has shared. So now, BC wildfires due to COVID-19 pandemic. The BC Wildfire Service is taking some extra precautions when it comes to preventing human-caused wildfires, including the implementation of Category 2 and Category 3 burning prohibition, prohibitions. Uh, we're not permitting any backyard burning, including burn barrels, uh, chimneys, fireworks, uh, those sort of things. BC Wildfire Service um, Fire Information Officer Kyla Fraser said, noting that although such bans are typically in the spring, the current prohibition uh, did go on in earlier than usual on April 16th this year. Last year, the ban was expended, ex enacted in mid-June. Campfires, however, are still permitted. Um, so that's what they're trying to do is because uh, there could be a lack of um, response time, uh, they're getting ahead of it and putting things out uh, in advance. So that is awesome. Being proactive is great um, and keeping us all safe. And that being said, there was a mushroom manure compact fire over the weekend. Uh, now, this is a story taken from the Ashcroft Cash, no, the Barbara Roden from Ashcroft Mayor page. She shared this uh, literally uh, two or three minutes just before we went on the air. Um, so I haven't actually had a chance to read it all yet. Uh, but a fire started via spontaneous combustion at the compost facility approximately 10 kilometers east of Cache Creek on Highway 1 uh, over the weekend. The facility formerly produced mushroom compost and now takes food waste and turns it into compost. The fire is on private pr property in the TNRD area I um, in an area not served by the fi any fire departments. And this, uh, so Cache Creek couldn't go and help out with this um, for it is out of their limit. Uh, the facility manager has told me, and this is again from Barbara's perspective, uh, so the facility manager has told me that he and his crew are fighting the fire with equipment and water uh, from the site. The fire has been contained and a containment perimeter fire line has been established. The manager says that because of the heat and smoke, the crew has not been able to may begin working on tearing apart the area where the fire is located as they cannot get close enough to it. BC Wildfire Service has been to the site to monitor it as the fire is not threatening any structures, communities, or crown land. They do not have the authority to go to the private property and fight it. They will continue to monitor the situation. The smoke resulting from the fire is affecting the area due to an inversion caused by high pressure ridge over the area. The smoke tends to clear during the day and then settle in during the evening. Uh, there is no timeline as to when we can expect this fire to be extinguished. 
Uh, again, Barbara has spoken with the facility manager, the TNRD Environmental Services, BC Wild Fire Services, the Ministry of the Environment, and the Ministry, the Ministry of National Resources. And uh, she says that I have stressed that the Ashcroft Cash Creek area has a much higher than average percentage of residents who are over the age of 65. Um, and I have also noted that there's a larger number of people of all ages suffering from COPD, asthma, and other conditions that will be adversely affected by smoke and that the COVID-19 virus affects the lungs, putting already vulnerable people and even more at risk. Uh, so thank you to Barbara Roden for um, uh, jumping on that. Uh, and she also says anyone who would like to register their concerns over the smoke can call the report all call the report all poachers and polluters or RAPP line at one eight seven seven nine five two two seven two seven seven. Again, that's one eight seven seven nine five two seven two seven seven, and speak with someone who will take your details and add them to the others that have been received. So that is the. Report all poachers and polluters hotline or RAPP. Um, if you have concerns, give that number a call. And Vicky says the air and smell has been yucky. Yes, it has. Um, so, and that's it's an interesting fact that no, it's not in anybody's jurisdiction to put out that fire. Um, but uh, so now we're going to get on to the Ashcroft Slough. Uh, so. We have uh, been in contact with the Ashcroft Terminal and they are asking us to add some information to their uh, current form, which I will read out here. And then I will give you the additional information. Let me just clean up my desktop here a little bit. Uh, I can get rid of you. I can get rid of you. Where are we? Where is it? Here it is. Okay. So the Ashcroft Terminal Community Working Group. Uh, so, the Ashcroft Terminal is installing a gate and limiting access to its private property, uh, which includes riverfront land referred to as the, let me make this just a little bit bigger, uh, referred to as the slough. Protecting the public, our employees, and construction team in Ashcroft Terminal's top priority, the company has uh, both a legal responsibility and a moral duty to prevent accidents. Uh, so the Ashcroft Terminal is creating a working group to examine issues associated with gate installation and development alternatives uh, to riverfront access at the slough located on the Inland Port's private property. The working group will consist of 10 members, including a representative of the Village of Cache Creek Council, the Ashcroft Council, uh, the Bona a member from the Bonaparte Indian Band, a member of the Ashcroft Indian Band, three members at large in the community, and three representatives from the Ashcroft Terminal. The working group will be co-chaired by members of the Ashcroft Terminal's management team and an Ashcroft community member. Ashcroft Terminal will provide facil a facilitator for the meetings. The purpose of the working group is to identify potential issues associated with restricted access, uh, generate ideas about uh, alternatives to riverfront access to Ashcroft Terminal private property, share information with the wider communities about the alternatives. Um, the terms of reference for the working group are, the working group is an advisory and not decisionary making body. Members of the working group identify issues and brainstorm potential solutions. Members of the working group remain open to all solutions. Members of the working group uh, help communicate potential options to the wider community. Members of the community at large are welcome to apply uh, to be a member of the working group and must meet the following eligibility criteria. Have their primary residence in the village of Ashcroft or Cache Creek jurisdiction or be registered member of the Bonaparte or Ashcroft Indian Bands. Have prepared a brief statement on their interest in the topic and how they could uh, make a contribution to the working group. Have an ability to attend working group meetings which uh, due to COVID-19 are planning to take place virtually online. The working group meetings will be scheduled twice per month for approximately three months at various times of the day or evening to meet working group members availability. This is non, this is, there is no compensation for attendance at uh, working group meetings. 
if interested in participating on the working group, please submit a brief statement of interest that describes why you are interested in participating and the contribution you believe you can make. Please submit your statement uh, as of two days ago. Um, so that is the statement that they made and uh, what they would like us to add to that is that the objective of the community working group is to identify issues and explore alternatives to riverfront access in areas other than the slough. Um, we really need to ensure the public is not mixing with an active construction and industrial site and limiting access is the best way to do that. So that is the two pieces of new information that we have from the Ashcroft Terminal. Um, so if you are one of those people that is on that, that working group, that is awesome. We tried. They did ask us not to uh, take part yet. Um, but they will be providing us with statements as things move forward. Uh, now I want to talk about the... Let me find it here. Boom. Oh, so I'll get rid of my number. Sorry. It's a little bit of a... There we go. So, COVID-19, do you need help? So if you are at home right now, if you need food, supplies delivered to your door, if you are at home by yourself and you are lonely and you need someone to chat with, you can call this number. If you need your mail picked up, if you need your pharmaceuticals picked up, if you need spiritual support, call 250-457-3422. This is the Ashcroft Cash Creek Helpline. Um, and if you'd like more information about what's going on around town, uh, you can get a hold of the Ash Cash Clinton COVID-19 Community Info Board on Facebook. Um, there's lots of really great people working on this project, and they've been getting a, a few phone calls here and there. So um, to everyone involved, thank you so much for what you've been doing. Uh, to the Equality Project, who is open Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, <coughs> uh, thank you very much. The Elizabeth Fry Society and the Food Bank is doing a great job. Soup's On is still doing their thing, so that's awesome. Um, there's been lots of support for people in this time. And uh, so I wanted to say thank you to everyone that is involved in that kind of thing. Uh, thank you to the doctors and, of course, all of our frontline workers at the grocery store and that kind of thing. You guys are rocking it. That's really all I have for today. Uh, so we will be back on Friday at three in the afternoon. Um, if it's not me, it will be Jessica. And thank you all for watching. Please like, share uh, this video. Uh, tell your friends about us. Let's get the word out. And um, yeah, if you are looking for a job, we have three positions open up. Uh, so send in your resume and let's see if we can't get you hooked up at the Hub Online Network. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a great uh, rest of your week until Friday and we will see you then.